morning, everybody. Um, okay, I want to see a show of hands. Who was at the party last night? Okay, so um, my sympathies. I had to get up this morning, too. I kind of think that most people who are at the party are not here this morning, and um, I desperately wish to be one of them as well. But <laughs> such is, it is what it is, right? Um, we've told you uh, previously that one of the things you're getting as a result of being here is a report on user acquisition. Uh, and I'm going to give you a very brief preview of what's in that, some of the key things and uh, some things you're really looking forward to. So uh, we'll talk a little bit about what's working, what's changing, uh, prices. Um, and, and some of the things of what to do. But it's just a preview, and you'll have the full report as well to take a look through. So yeah, this is me. Um, and uh, we've talked a lot, actually, at this conference about the monetization gap in mobile. Uh, this is Mary Meeker's slide from a few months ago, right? Uh, and it's not a shock that there's been that monetization gap there because the change has been so rapid, so quick. The shift to mobile, has just happened almost overnight, socially speaking, right? Very literally, um, the, the money is following and it's following quickly. We're talking $70 billion in mobile advertising this year, right? Um, and worlds are colliding. Uh, the, the, the reality is, is that it's not just uh, the mobile first, it's not just the mobile gaming people, uh, it's the brands that are coming in. And the brands are rushing in in two different ways, right? Um, they're rushing in, in, in uh, because they want to sell stuff uh, and they're selling product, but they're also wanting to have a one-to-one -one relationship with their customers, their users, their fans, just like all the mobile first companies currently have with having their app uh, on their customer's phone. So there's two different ways that they're rushing in there and what we've got is good news on the monetization side. $100 billion rushing into mobile next year, right? $100 billion of mobile ad spend globally. Uh, we've also got bad news on <laughs> bad news on the user acquisition side because $660 billion, which is the global ad spend next year, is also rushing in, right? It's almost as if those things are connected. <laughs> user acquisition and monetization, right? The ad spend is going up. Lots of people are coming in there. Lots of people are buying ads. And it's making user acquisition more challenging, which our costs are going up. That's the hard part. So I want to talk about five quick things from the report uh, that you might want to think about as you're doing user acquisition in the coming months um, and coming year. First off, CPI is dead. Um, I know it's still in use. I know there's still some uses for it, but by and large, CPI is dead. This is from last year. That blue part of the graph there is the percentage of developers, mobile developers, who wanted to buy users via CPI, right? Pretty simple model. I know what I'm going to pay. If I know what my LTV is, I can make a calculation. Done, right? This year, 731 developers that we, that we surveyed, if you see that big uh, bar on the left there, that's cost per action, cost per engagement, and cost per purchase. And that's about 4x the number of developers you want to pay via CPI, right? Um, it's not about the metric. It's about what happens after that. Almost four times more popular. Secondly, expanding beyond Facebook. This is really, really hard to do because Facebook is really, really big and you're going to be using Facebook, there's no doubt about it. Really, really challenging. In fact, it's almost incomparably massive. That's Facebook along the bottom there. And don't worry, I'm, I'm going fast on these slides, but you'll get a chance to see them all in detail, obviously, when you get the full report. Um, so that's challenging to do, but we are seeing pockets of other uh, opportunity. Uh, Twitter is starting to show some signs of life. Other social platforms are emerging. Even Google Plus, I mean, it's like the, um, the, the guy in uh, Monty Python is being thrown on the wagon, right? I'm not dead yet. Um, and um, <laughs> you soon will be. <laughs> um, but you know, even there, uh, developers are finding some, some, some pockets. Uh, Twitter is interesting, actually. Last year, in our survey and in our research, Twitter was, was frankly horrific. Uh, and, and very few people were finding quality users who paid very well on Twitter. 
this year after Twitter has spent a lot of effort, a lot of resources in improving what they're doing for user acquisition, mobile user acquisition, uh, there are developers and publishers who are finding pockets of quality users there. So interesting things. Third, uh, more partners. The average mobile developer that, that we surveyed uh, uses about four user acquisition partners. So I'm not talking necessarily just the social platforms, I'm talking about actual vendors, user acquisition vendors, right? But those with very high LTV use six or more, right? Uh, the more user acquisition partners you have, the better you're doing. That's actually not very surprising, and not very shocking either, right? You're trying a lot of stuff, you're seeing what works. And when it works, you're doubling down on it. There's challenge here, right? Um, because when you're using more acquisition partners, you're integrating more, uh, especially if you're doing some smart things and trying to integrate your backend systems so you know automatically and your ad partners know automatically what's going on with your LTV and what's going on with your users and to get more of these kind and fewer of those kind and everything like that. But it is successful. Fourth, timing the market. Um, what do they call people uh, who time the stock market, by the way? Anybody? Poor. Um, but <laughs> a little, little bit different here. Uh, we got some interesting data from Fetch, right? And unless you have to, and I realize that, that different um, apps, different companies are different, um, different publishers are different. Um, but unless you, if, you, if you possibly can, try and avoid the first and last months of the year. Right? It's a bit of a bloodbath. It's like, um, it's like uh, uh, catching fire or, um, sorry, what's that movie? Jennifer Lawrence, somebody give me a clue here. The first one. Thank you, Hunger Games. You know, right off the top and they're, they're beginning of the games and everybody runs in. It's a bloodbath right there. Everybody wants, new devices are going out um, and everybody wants their, their devices installed first month, last month of the year. Really, really challenging. Um, stick to the first and last weeks of the month if you can. Uh, interesting things there. Um, and the middle of the week is better um, than, than the weekends. And of course, that's not always going to work for you. Uh, sometimes you've got to go where your users are and when they're receptive, and you're going to have to pay those things. But if you can avoid it, if you can find smart ways to avoid that, uh, you're going to do some interesting things at a less cost. So fifth, uh, User engagement is a new user acquisition, right? Um, this, I don't think, is a shock or a surprise to many mobile-first people who have been living this for some time now. Um, but getting the metric, this is some data from Liftoff, getting the metric is, is relatively cheap, right? You may pay two bucks, three bucks, four bucks, five bucks for the user, uh, but it's not about the metric. It's about what happens after the metric, right? It's about actually not getting a user, but getting a customer. Um, and that's the challenge. And so that's why we see so much um, emphasis in the mobile marketing automation space or mobile engagement space, focusing on onboarding new users, focusing on messaging, um, whether that's in-app or out-of-the-app notifications or other things like that, uh, tutorials, other things like that, onboarding users and spending time and energy understanding them, knowing them, um, engaging them, reaching out with them, communicating to them, and that sort of thing. That's one of the reasons, well, that's the key reason, why so many mobile marketing and mobile advertising companies are buying up or adding mobile marketing automation or mobile engagement capability and functionality to their stack, right? You've got Tapjoy, Localytics, Delta DNA, uh, Toon just bought one, Ad Colony came out with um, some mobile engagement solutions as well. Uh, so, you know, there's no point in acquiring users if you're not going to engage them. Uh, that's all I have time for. You'll get the full report. You'll be able to peruse it at your leisure. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it.